Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, Prez? Yo, what's up, brother? How you OG been, man? OG Gangster Pat. What's going man, on? What what's going on, man? Not much, man. man. Just been hanging in there. Taking it one day at a time, that's... you know? You know, the oh, Hillcrest yeah. Vikings, that's how they do it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't play. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Huge honor to have you back on the show, man. And, uh, you know, since the last time we had John, we, we we got a, a whole bunch of new listeners and stuff, people that might not have heard your story before. But, you know what I'm saying, let's take them back, Pat, because you really, your roots, you know what I'm saying, go back to the beginning of, of the Memphis rap scene, man. Um Take us back to those early days when you was just starting out, man, and, and what it was like, you know what I'm saying, in Memphis at that time, brother. Yeah, Memphis, uh, man, it was it was pretty hard to really get on in rap because uh, Stax Records was such a big deal here. You know, Memphis is a blues town, so yeah. there wasn't really many avenues for, for hip-hop. You know, so... Uh, I mean, as as a young guy, I grew up around the business. My father used to have me in the studio with him all the time. So <clears throat> it's like everybody at Stacks was my family, you know. So um, I I kind of understood that in order to do music, you had to have an investor. So that's that's one thing that kind of put me out front is I knew how I knew how the structure was. So where well, a lot of guys were just trying to in the talent shows and stuff like that. I was calling studios. I was hounding people trying to get an investor and stuff like that. And one day, my uh, a friend of mine hooked me up with this guy who was looking to put some money in, 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 into the music business. And so that's how I got my shot. It's like he already had some guys that was in there with him. He had DJ Slice Rod, <laughs> a couple of more other people. But my determination and my work ethic is kind of propelled me past all of them because I was a newcomer, but I ended up coming out first. You know, because it's like when they used to leave the studio, I would just say, man, just lock me in here, man. I don't even want to go home. And I spend the night in there, and they, they get back in the morning. I got three songs written, about five beats done. It's like the work that wow. they was crazy back then. But that's, that's how I ended up getting them kid. to invest in me first. Yeah, go ahead. You were just a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was 15, 16 years old. I was... uh. Wasn't doing too well in school, so I used to leave school and go sit outside on the steps of the studio and just wait for somebody to show up, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah. I finally got in, man. And when I got in, I outworked everybody. And that's how my record ended up coming out first. And after yeah. that, Atlantic picked it up. So, boom. You know, that's how we got that. That's that how, yeah, that number one suspect. Classic. That's how I got that major deal. I cut half of the record with a guy named Fat Tony. That was that was the first investor. He got murdered before we could finish the album. I actually was now, in the car with him. he got murdered with, with you. Killed. You were in the car with him when he got murdered, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was in the car. I was driving, and they shot through my window. But he ended up getting, catching the worst of that, you know. Because after that first, I guess after that first bullet hit, I ducked because... Glass, I felt glass shot in my face, so I got down. <clears throat> and after that, they just sprayed it up. <laughs> and when I looked up, man, he was, he was, he had checked out. He was gone, bro. So that oh, was the first man. CEO. Yeah. And, and then Red the Boy came along. Too? Say that again. Didn't you get shot too, Pat, when uh, Tony Tony got killed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a head wound, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't real severe because it's like some some slowed the bullets that hit me. Some slowed them down. I guess it was the little paneling, like you know, right behind the one that that little that little part right there with a the door and all that little. You know, it was a, it was a 1991 yeah. Mercedes Benz. So you know, that, those cars are kind of airtight. So it had a lot around the uh, the stripping of the window and stuff like that. And by the grace of God, some slowed them bullets down. The one that hit me was slowed down. It didn't. It didn't like crack my skull or nothing like that. But uh, the, no. the, the 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 paramedics, they was like, man, you must have had an angel in your pocket. They was like, we've never seen nobody with an injury like this and the type of weapon that they were shooting, you know. Because they was like, man, your buddy, he caught the worst. Uh. So it was just a uh, you know, rest in peace to him. He was your investor or the CEO or whatever. Yeah. Uh, was, was he? Uh, um, you know what I'm saying? He was putting all the money behind you. What what happened after that? Did your career kind of come to a halt after that? 
Yeah, once he after he got killed, his folks came and snatched everything out of the studio. So we still the building was owned by somebody else. So he was leasing the building. So the the stuff the the all the all the work he put in as far as soundproofing the place that remained in the building. They took all the equipment and then <clears throat> there was this guy named Reginald Borden that we knew. He came in and picked up, you know what I'm saying, the slack. And uh, bought all new equipment, put it back in the studio, and we kept working. And then he even took us to another studio, a more established studio called Cotton Row, where this guy named Nico Lyris was engineering. And that's where we did the second half of the album. You know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah. the first half of the Masters was paid for. You know what I'm saying? I, me, I was so young at the time. I handed the Masters over to Atlantic, but I didn't know I was supposed to get compensated for those. But you, my, my CEO, he didn't. That's how. That's how. That's how much we didn't know about the business. You know, I knew a lot for our studio work from being around Pops, but when it came down to the actual business, there was so much we didn't know. And we actually handed them over to Masters, and we didn't get nowhere near what we should have got. But we was going through this independent called Joy Boy Records, and they got cut a seventy-five thousand dollar check, and we got crumbs. I think we got. I think they sent us maybe like ten, fifteen thousand. We bust that up. Oh. So right off the bat, we was getting screwed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just lack of hey, knowledge. Man, you guys doing all the work. Um, yeah, yeah, we put all the work. All the money. Yeah. Now, yeah. Joy Boy, for those who ain't listening, Joy Boy is the same label that put out people like the Dogs and a lot of the Bass Patrol records, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disco Rick and the Disco Dogs Rick, and all yeah. them artists. The Funky Y2C, I, I forgot the name of that little kid group that they had too. Yeah, they had oh. a, they had a few they had a uh, they had a few hit artists though, man. They they did pretty good on their run, you know. Oh yeah, but, definitely, uh, definitely. At what point did you go to Atlantic? Was that after Joy Boy or before? But yeah, well actually we got the Atlantic deal through Joy Boy. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> yeah. So it it was getting the buzz. Tennessee, Florida, you know, the southern region. And Atlantic picked it up. You know, it was one of they, well, we're going to sign it. We're going to sign a whole wave of people and throw it against the wall and whatever stick. You know, they didn't really, they didn't, we weren't priority at all at Atlantic. We was just, got caught up in that. <clears throat> Them signing a lot of artists. And some stick cool, they'll roll with it or whatever. Don't stick, they'll let it go. But we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't have promotion. Like, they didn't have us, we didn't have a promotional budget. They just threw my stuff out there, and luckily it just caught on because it was street. You know, and yeah. word of mouth sold more records for me than anything because I really never had no real promotion. You know what I'm saying? So that deal didn't last yeah. a whole year. You know, and and after that, I hooked up. Because that record was a hardcore record. Not to cut you off, but that record was such a hardcore record at that time. I mean, it, it, to me, it was just as hard as that Ghetto Boys record. You know what I'm saying? They came out that year, and uh, it could have been just as big too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, why, why was uh, uh, why, why were people kind of shying away from it? Was it the subject matter on there, like songs like Shooting on Nuts? I don't. I don't think it was the uh, content of it all. I just think it was the kind of deal we had. I didn't really have real management at the time. I just made a bunch of horrible deals, and when you tied in the horrible deals, people just don't want to invest in that situation. So I think that was just a good album, but it was just, it was the situation was wrong. You know what I'm saying? I think if I would have had somebody that that knew a little bit more about the industry and making deals than what we knew at the time, we'd have been in a better position. You know, because yeah. when, when, during the negotiation of that contract, it's like. We didn't. We didn't demand nothing. We didn't ask for nothing. We just pretty much signed the first first thing they they sent us. You know, like okay, this Atlanta. Let's go ahead and sign this and get this back. So that just that's that immaturity, that lack of knowledge. You know, back at that time, it wasn't a lot of hip hop CEOs like Master P and Baby and Easy. And I mean, Easy was around, but we didn't we didn't understand what angle he was coming from as far as owning your label at the time. That was a little over our heads. You know. So it was just, it, I was just really a little bit before my time. Yeah, well, plus you're just a kid, you know what I'm saying? You're learning the ropes, you know what I'm saying? I imagine your main focus was, okay, I'm going to make the music, you know what I'm saying? And these guys are going to handle the business at that time. Um, exactly. You know what I'm saying? 
but eventually, exactly. eventually, okay, the the record did what it did. You know what I'm saying? And eventually, you ended up on uh, Ichiban Rap Records. You know, MC Breed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Hard Boys. I mean, some some real some real dope label mates. You know what I'm saying? Uh, how did you end oh, up yeah. over at Ichiban? Well, I was uh, after that Atlanta situation just folded. I was still doing shows, and we was performing. I think we may have been in Greenwood, Mississippi. We would think we was in Greenwood, Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> and I met this guy named Leroy McMath, who had MC Breed at the time. Breed had just come out with their record, "Ain't No Future in Front." It was, it was, it was at its hottest at the time. I met him, and uh, he was, he was. Uh, he had struck a few deals with a few artists, and he wanted to get me back with Atlantic and work that deal. But uh, <clears throat> you know, once they once they drop you, they slick blackball you, man. It just wouldn't have been good trying to open them channels back up after they done already dropped you. So he decided, well, I just signed you to Itchy Bond, <laughs> you know. And he, I was like, okay, that's cool. I didn't know who the hell Itchy Bond was at the time, but uh. He was like, we got MC Breed and we got the school girls and we got a couple of more artists. I'm like, shit, that's cool. I know who MC Breed is. So he had, at that time, he had a video on MTV. You know, he was on tour with a few other artists, a, a well-known artist. So I'm like, shit, that can't be bad. You know, I'm trying to search yeah. for another situation anyway. So he brought me down to Atlanta, and uh, I jumped on the road with Breed immediately. You know, so I kind of caught the tail end of the Ain't No Future Run when he was out promoting that record. And I got to do a lot of shows with him. Bree taught me a lot of stuff, you know. As far as being on the road, he introduced me to a lot of other great artists like Red Man and, and man, just so many people, man. We was meeting some of everybody because, like I said, that record was hot. He had the video on MTV. <clears throat> and, um, well, yeah, it caught the attention we, of Tupac. Uh, uh, I, mean, I was just listening to Pooh Man, Don't Cost a Dime. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that dude was working <laughs> with everybody. Uh, he was. So that's dope that you got to. You did a lot of shows with him, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, man, he Bree was such a generous guy, man, and uh, he opened up his house to us. I mean, we practically lived with that guy. You know, when I first got to Atlanta, <clears throat> I didn't have an apartment then, and man, so we all lived at Bree house. Then we went from Bree house to Two Shot house. <laughs> you know, I eventually got my own spot, but I still was back and forth, so. And uh, he, he was he, he he was a generous guy, man. He let you come into the house, record, man, then charge you nothing. Anybody that came to town that was somebody and they needed somewhere to crash, call Breed, man. He just his house was like the dog pound, you know what I'm saying? You never know who uh, would be there, man. Oh man, you while you go over there, man. You Tupac was over there one day. That was before he went out there and ripped Itchy Bun apart, you know. Uh, Doc used to be over there. Met Faison, Love, Big Worm from Friday over there, man. So many people. So many people, man. That's when I first heard of who. I didn't even know who Warren G was. I first heard about Warren G from being around Breed. <clears throat> That's when they was doing the New Breed album. Warren G did a lot of production on that album, but we didn't know Dr. Dre had a brother, you know. And next yeah. thing you know, boom, he blow up. So, I mean, Breed was a big inspiration. As far as me being in the game, man, he taught me a lot. He showed me a lot, you know. So yeah. I give him that oh, credit. Yeah, Rest in peace, Breed. And you, 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 uh, you did projects or you did uh, stuff with the DSC, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. We uh, we worked on a lot of stuff. A, lot, a few songs that we did never never got released. You know, um, I don't. I, DFC, man, them, them guys are cool as a fan. I don't think they had the best deal set up. But they put out some good records, and we we did a little project together. And uh, yeah. man, them brothers, them Michigan cats, man, they solid. You know what I'm saying? Flint boys, they yeah. solid, man. Yeah. That's dope. You was able to make them connections. You know what I'm saying? From Memphis to Flint, like that. You know, um, did that? Uh, did you have a good relationship with Breed later on in his life before he had passed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breed, uh, he got into some trouble, and uh, yeah, some issues going. He did a little prison time. I spoke with him as soon as he got out, and that's the last time I talked to him. Cause, uh, man, you know, things was things things were moving so fast and crazy back then. <laughs> and then I got the news that he had passed away. I was saddened by that, man. Cause, 
He was like a big brother. Man. I learned a lot <clears throat> in this game from Breed. Yeah. And, uh, you see how he was there for so many people, man, but when he needed help, man, <sighs> seemed like there nobody how to reach out, you know what I'm saying? And he's always see had to see that. For sure. and, you know, a lot, a lot of people uh, forget those along the way, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, you know, that, that's always that's always bullshit, you know. I, I've seen that with a yeah. lot of artists, man. I see a lot yeah. of artists uh, do things for people, and then in their time of need, they're forgotten. You know what I'm saying? And um, well, like yourself, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody now knows, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you, you're the pioneer of Memphis, you know what I'm saying? You put the city on the map. But for a while, you know what I'm saying? Catch wasn't really acknowledging what you did for the city. You know what I'm saying? All the work you put in, all the people you mentored, you know what I'm saying? How did yeah. that make you feel when you kind of wasn't getting your props? I mean, it's it's discouraging when you when you think about it sometimes, but, <clears throat> you know, it, it, but that's Memphis for you, though. Everybody want to take the credit, but don't nobody want to put the work in. And those that put the work in always get the credit stolen from them, you know, but that's yeah. that's just how it is sometimes. But I'm just thankful that, you know what I'm saying, guys like you know the truth, you know what I'm saying, guys with a platform that, that, that can, uh, you know, just even us talking about it now, Somebody that may have may have not known now they know so, you know. Yeah. As long as the real yeah. ones know that that that's really what matters, man. Oh yeah, definitely. We before you came on, we was talking um, too. We was talking about I forget what show it was, but Paul uh, DJ Paul recently um, he mentioned you in an interview, and he was yeah. giving you props. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you and Paul had beef. You know what I'm saying? How does that make you feel now? seen him finally be, acknowledge you, you know what I'm saying, when for so many years he really wouldn't really even acknowledge you. I mean, it's it's always, anything anything that's that's, that's moving forward in a positive manner is always good, man. I'm, it feels good yeah, to hear that, you know, because at once upon a time, that was my little homie, man, and, you know, it's like we were so young back then, and when you see somebody, you know, to him, he was looking at me like I was already on, like I had already made it. You know, you were the major label, man. You got an album out. You got video out. He was so young. In his eyes, I could just pull him right in. But it wasn't like that. He didn't, I mean, you know, at the time, he didn't really know <clears throat> all the stuff I was going through. So sometimes when people don't know the situation, they think you just want the spotlight for yourself. And they'll take that as, they'll take that, uh, you know, as an offense. Like, he used, to, he used to write raps and bring them to me, and I'd be like, it sound high, Paul, but it need to be better, man. We got to, because I taught him and Lord Infamous how to write 16 bars, you know, so I was just yeah. trying to help him get his lyrical skill. He was struggling with it back then, and <clears throat> he used to take that personal, and I'd like, no, don't take it personal, man. It ain't like that. I'm trying to help you get right so I can pull you in, because at that time, you had to know how to rap. Whack rappers didn't have the platform they got now back then. <laughs> You couldn't bring no whack rapper, you know what I'm saying, in and just expect people to embrace them like that. And they, they weren't developed yet. But over time, they, I mean, look what, look how they turned out though. Had I, had I would have pulled them in, it, they probably would have took a whole another route. By me not pulling them in, getting them that tough love, look what they turned into, man. Lord Infamous turned out to be one of the greatest lyrics of all time in my book. And Paul became yeah. one of the best CEOs in the South, you know, far as. Far as, you know, taking his label and the groups and stuff to the level that he took them to, you know, he's a he's a very good businessman <clears throat> when it comes to running a label and stuff like that. So, I mean, I guess their motivation yeah. was to prove me wrong. That may have been what propelled them to the level that they got to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, man. I was little, little things like that could alter everything. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And and like you said too, man, he was super fucking young. You were super young. At that point in time, you know what I'm saying, he might not have understood what was really going on. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And, yeah. and uh, you know, but, yeah, you, you you were there, you know what I'm saying. You helped, uh, uh, you know, like I said, mentor the, the development with a lot of these guys. You helped them write, you know what I'm saying. Um, what about today, man? Do uh, you think, I mean, I, I you know, uh, I we just had Paul on. I didn't get a chance to ask him this, but I'm going to ask this to you. 
do you think now that all this time has passed, you guys have grown and you've been in the game so long, is there a possibility that you guys could actually collab? Because I think that would be dope as fuck, man. Man, man I know I the fans would want to see it. <laughs> I would love to, man. You know, just just because uh, you know, just because I know it's it's gonna be some, it's gonna be epic. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I don't know. See, the thing about it is, me and him never had that sit down. All, all our yeah. run-ins were, at once upon a time, verbally confrontational. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The one time it got serious when we bumped into Juice and Jeb at Arden Studios, and uh, I had a homie with me, and we was already in a bad mood anyway. We had been in tour with some old people, and we get up there and. The guy comes out and says, hey, man, y'all hold up. We got 3-6 Mafia back here. We looking at each other like, oh, shit, here it go again. But it was just juicy by itself. <clears throat> so he come out, and, you know, we exchanged words. and You know, it was crazy at once upon a time, man. But, I mean, that's growth. If, if we could sit down and chop it up in that way, right. you know, because people can say, even though you can, give, you can give a person props in a radio interview, and I'm thankful for that. Yeah. But at the same time, if I don't right. talk to him, I still don't know where his head is. You know, exactly. and I tried to reach out several times, man. But you know, you have to. You have to I right. guess when he read it, we'll have that conversation. I just hope it don't be too right. late. Right? You know, you know, you know. It's crazy that you say that, though, Pat. Uh, like when we had Paul on the show uh, once before, y'all had uh, he did the shit with uh, with Zerk to lock him in the trunk. He didn't even know you was in the video. You know what I'm I saying? Know. Like I'm like the oh. video out. That shit and the shit was bumping. He didn't even recognize it was you. And like. The, the the one thing I know is because I, I was down in Memphis when y'all was doing y'all things. I was living down now, graduating from high school, all that shit, whatever, whatever. But yeah. one thing about Memphis was, like, all the artists was easy accessible to the guys. I think that's what made us buy y'all shit, too, because we could see y'all riding up the street. We could see yeah. you on Bill on the weekend. Motherfucker running to you in the Brook Woods or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, shit, yeah. and, that, and that's what made that shit cool. And, you know, like you said, it's just a Memphis thing. Niggas get pissed. It's just like with uh, Dolphin, uh... And Gotti and them, that's some Memphis shit. Even though they all the way out out west with the bullshit, it's still some Memphis shit. Motherfuckers will get at motherfuckers whenever they see each other, but at the same time, motherfuckers will link up, link up the same yeah. way, too. Yeah, yeah. That, that's you, the crazy right, thing man. about Memphis, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, it is, man. It's, and, and it's sad. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about what really happened with the golf and Dotty situation, but... I mean, but it's sad that Dolph got to end up in the hospital with gunshots, man. It, and it's just music. You know what I'm saying? It's just right. music. These two dudes ain't even never had a fist fight with each other. It's music, right. man. I, I just they don't... hoods ain't never be. They hoods, as, as far as they generation, ain't never really beef with niggas. They, the same motherfucker that go to the jamborees and all that old shit together. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, now once y'all yeah. get on on a national platform, this ain't it, ain't, it ain't. it really ain't a good look for the town. Because the young kids love these dudes. They love Gotti yeah. and they love Dolph and them. You know what I'm saying? It's they the same do. way like we love you and, you and Paul and them. So, like, when y'all was, when yeah. y'all was going through y'all shit, we love the music the same way when, when, when Fly split off from Paul and them. Like, Paul and them used to be mad because we all in the same area, but we bumping Triple Bitch Mafia. But that shit was bumping when it came out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like, shit, nigga, you can't get mad at us. You, you, you turned us on to the nigga. And now you mad because we bumping this shit because he ain't with you. Like, shit, we going to bump gangsta, uh Black. We going to bump Skinny Pimp them. Like, we love they shit, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Memphis, Memphis represent for Memphis, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I do know that for shit. Sure. For sure. For sure. And, that's, and that's, that's one thing I had to realize myself, too, man. Because, like, sometimes the fans don't really know what be going on behind the scenes unless we decide to make it public. Mm-hmm. So you can't really fault the fans. Like, I know when the song that Paul and them had, uh, when I say we cares, you say I know for a fact that song was about me and Player Fly. So when I'm yeah. in the club and that song come on and everybody chanting along with it, psychologically I'm feeling like, damn, they talking about me. You know what I'm saying? They might be looking at yeah. me like, you know, anything could pop off. But in, in reality, they really don't because a lot of people, they, they had an idea with a diss song, but they didn't. he didn't really say no name. So... Unless you knew us personally, you kind of had to try to figure out who they was talking about. But when you know they, yeah. when you know somebody talking about you, you never know how how the people around you thinking. Because when I was in beef with them, it seemed like we were beefing with the whole city down there because they was hot at the time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They was the hottest yeah. at the time in the city. So whoever whoever the hottest going, they got the most people behind them. 
So, you know, people yeah. used to ride past my house at 3 o'clock in the morning, bump a triple C, loud, you know, disrespected. Until I come yeah, outside I on the porch and find that Tech 9 in the air. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, they about to rip the transmission out that motherfucker trying to get away. <laughs> you heard me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and motherfuckers so not even knowing it. Uh, a lot of times motherfuckers might not even know that they, that you feeling that type of way. They just bumping the song. Like you say, fan, yeah. fans don't know that shit. Like when, yeah. you, when you had your diss song to them, we knew exactly who you were talking about. Because you brought it to them like that. So a motherfucker used yeah, to say, yeah. man, you a motherfucker, I hate it. You listen, I thought you said you fuck with 3-6 Mafia, but you over here bumping this gangster pack. I say, I fuck with all yeah. these motherfuckers because I didn't, t- I didn't physically seen y'all, physically touch y'all, physically got CDs from y'all. We done been at the yeah. same spots. Everybody went to the Ebony and Lace and all that old shit back in the day. Yeah, if you want no yeah, motherfucking G, right. you want no, and in Black Haven, everybody knew everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was like, man, I, I fuck with all of them. The music is just the music. You know what yeah, I'm saying? exactly. So you exactly. can't tell me I don't fuck with 3-6 because I bump fly. Fly shit bumping yeah. too. We all from the same city. Yeah, yeah, that's real. Yeah. So, but some fans especially when I moved, Especially when I moved out of town because I want to show everybody this shit. Like, yeah, I want to feel yeah. like I'm the first the first motherfucker in St. Louis that knew about y'all. I feel like that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Even though I'm probably not, you know what I'm saying? But I still yeah. feel like because I was representing that shit before we got popular and trendy and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel you. But yeah, some fans, some some fans put themselves in the middle of that beef, man. You know, if they if they ride with three six heavy enough and they see you somewhere, they lie and try to yeah. disrespect you, man, over something they don't even have nothing to do with. So beef right. can be dangerous, not just from the artists, but from their fans too. Because some people mm. take every word you say on the like record that. to the heart, man. Yeah, I never even really looked at it like that. Yeah. So you could be like in Nashville or somewhere, and somebody see you and be like. Oh, that's that weak ass motherfucker, Gangsta Pat, man. He don't fuck. We hypnotize camp out, and then they just start talking some shit yeah. or something. And you be the guy yeah. in a real situation over a motherfucker that don't even know why y'all really going through what y'all going through. Exactly, and that's how it be, you know. And it's, yeah. it's, but that, but it, it, like I said, man, some people put themselves in the middle of stuff they don't even they don't even know nothing about. So that's why I said beef can be dangerous, man. You you know you. I, I wish it would just stay on the records. I, I hate they had to get into the streets, and, cause I mean it's like, <clears throat> you know, I'm sure Dolph got a family to take care of, people depending on him and stuff like that. This man almost lost his life, man, over some music. <sighs> it's ain't it ain't that serious, man. You know, it just ain't that yeah. serious. It ain't never been to me. Like we, me, me, me and three sisters, we could have. They knew where I was. I knew where they was. If we wanted to get down like that, we, I, they could have came and shot on me. I could have went and shot on them. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't that. I ain't never thought of it like I just want to kill these. Now, if we had a word, we get into a fight, that's one thing. But to actually just want to go and murder them cats behind it, that never crossed my mind, man. It wasn't never, ever that serious to me. You know, I ain't worried about no fighting or whatever because that's what niggas do. That's, we grew up with, you grew up in that culture. Before I taking somebody's life over there, nah. It ain't never been that serious yeah. to me, man. And, and the villain, you know what I'm saying, you and the villain, the the way you guys mesh together so perfectly on that album, I always want to ask you this question. Why in the hell didn't y'all do a fucking uh, entire project together? Because that would have been just as dope as fuck. <sighs> you know, I, I hate to even speak on it, but I got to be 100, man. It, it's like... <clears throat> You know, I, I took the villain to Atlanta with me and, you know, put him in the studio and helped him develop and everything. And he flipped out on me, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He flipped out on me, man. He got the big head on me. He flipped out. He flipped out. And after that, we just couldn't do no more work together because, you know, I guess sometimes when you bring a newcomer in and they ain't really worked hard for nothing, they just, it just been handed it to them. Sometimes they yeah. can you know, that can go to their head. Sometimes they can mistake in that for, oh, man, I must be that good. It just came like that. Well, you know, let me move up right. to another level. And, uh, I never know. even knew that, man. I never, because yeah, I was just, like, man, this song was so good. I was wondering, man, why didn't they do anything else? But that makes sense, man. Sometimes that happens, too. You know what I'm saying? You right, guys might yeah. have a perfect chemistry musically, but you, you might not be able to get along outside of that. So... Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I know we had a, we had a good chemistry. Uh, I, I holler him every music? now and then because, you know, his some of his family members and some of my family members are real close. So uh, I see him every now and then, maybe on the holidays or something. 
You know, we 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 yeah. mutual. We speak. It's, it's mutual respect, but you know, musically we just. And and that's sad because he I, he was such a talented dude. And he, I think he would have came out with a solo <clears throat> album, man. He would have he would have definitely been one of the best solo albums out of Memphis. Period. If he'd have let right. me produce. Because I mean, I kind of like, help him. Develop. You know what's crazy about that song too is that's one of those songs that uh, if if a motherfucker could spit that whole song. And if they was a rapper and was trying to tongue to us, then we knew that was like one of the test songs that get your shit right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, you were saying earlier, like you couldn't be no you couldn't be no whack rapper back in the day. You had to have, you know, and back then it was all about style and shit. Like who biting who yeah. style, who jocking who. But your yeah. style basically came from who you was influenced by. So you can get cats that wasn't from Memphis that 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 it sound like they was from Memphis because. They they was influenced and that that was one of them songs. Like Twister got a couple of them too. Like if you can spit this, you should be able to spit yeah. your shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because y'all yeah. set the bar at a certain level. Same way with Lower yeah. Infamous. Like Coops Coops did a couple of them like that too. Like and and I and I give other uh, cats probably MC Max Scan Man. Them they did the same thing. Like but if, if if they could if they could if they could nail y'all songs, then you it made a motherfucker that was right their shit feel confident in spitting their shit sometimes. And that, yeah, that's yeah. unlooked at in hip hop nowadays too. Oh yeah, because yeah. it ain't it ain't about the lyrics no more. And you know, companies, you know how it is. If you if you take time and write your stuff, man, and you proud of what you write, you're gonna want to get compensated for that. But see, a lot of these right. cats, they know they're just scribbling and scrabbling, man. As long as the beat sound good, and they can put a Rolls Royce behind them, and a couple of chicks on the side of them, some chains on, they can sell that. They don't have to deal with this. Highly sophisticated lyricists who's gonna want to get paid for his work. We can get these cats a little bit of money and let them throw it around, put the mumble rap out, play it enough times and make people like it. You know, yeah. repetitive right. bullshit, repetitive brainwash. Yeah, man. Uh, we got a couple of songs. Yeah, first it's, one is the only fresh guy out of Brooklyn. Yeah, Fred. Fred right it is. Yeah, I'm here. What up, what yeah, up, what yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Pat, what's up, man? First, Not much. What's I want to say man? salute to good. him, man. Yes, sir, I want to salute you, man. You know what I mean? Coming from Brooklyn, you know, like, I listen to a, a, a lot of music, man. That's just me. I'm versatile with it. So I just yeah. want to say salute, man. You do what you keep doing, what you do like that. One of the songs, you know, like, I really got into that I felt really was G's ain't supposed to cry, man. Like I went through a lot in my, you know what I mean, when I was young, bro. So that that song right there kind of stuck with me, man. On a lot of my, a lot of my days when I was going through what I was going through. So I just want to say respect to you, fam, for real. Wow, man, I appreciate it, man, and thank thanks for giving that record a chance, man. You know, thanks for listening. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for acknowledging the music, man. I appreciate all mm-hmm. that, man. You know, to, to know my music reach somebody way in Brooklyn, man, it's it's, it's definitely amazing. It's, it's a good feeling, man. I appreciate it, brother, for sure. Absolutely. Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. Thanks a lot, Fred. You know what I'm saying? All Fred's right. a very gifted MC himself, man. He's uh he's down with the UGS movement, man, and doing a lot of stuff over here, man. Appreciate you calling, yeah. it, brother. Um, we got the homie uh, Marcel, the underground savior, man. I know you're a gangster, Pat Sand. How you doing, brother? I'm yeah, doing all right. Yeah. I'm doing all right. What up? Thanks for what up, what up, what up, homie? It ain't nothing, man. Shoot. I've been seeing the posts about being in relationships and stuff. I'm like, I feel you, man. Like, I kind of relate to what you be saying and stuff about that. Uh, yeah, like, I, did. I try to like, touch on a few subjects because you know we as guys we don't get man. Don't nobody want to hear our damn problems. You know, sometimes we go through yeah. stuff. Yeah, issue. We don't have nobody to talk to, man. So <laughs> if, if I could throw something out there that, that you know guys can relate to, man, who knows? I may say something better for beating their girlfriend up tonight, man. You heard me? Oh, you never might. know. <laughs> you never know. Yep, uh, I think. Hey, three years ago, I uh, went to jail over a girl. Yeah. Well, I seen, you know, mm. And that's why y'all ain't seen me for them 54 days and stuff. So I'm like, so I ain't doing that. Wow. But also yeah, that, um, cool. Yeah, I'd be trying to prevent that, uh, brothers yeah. from going through that, man. Yeah. But uh, that Deadly Versus, uh, one of my classmates uh, played me that song, I think, in uh, 
think in I think uh, 2004. I didn't know who was yeah. rapping until I find out it was you. And I yeah. didn't know who the, uh, the uh, villain was till I did my research too. It's like, man, yeah. these boys be bumping and stuff. Man, I didn't know. Yeah, uh, sure, <laughs> I didn't know uh, he flipped <laughs> on you. That's why y'all ain't made another album. But y'all had another song too called Pippin' Ain't Dead. Yeah, yeah, that was out the Says Money and Murder album. Oh, yeah, that was bumping yeah. too, but them are the only two songs you did with him, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. He sung a few hooks, he sung a couple of hooks on another record. We did a song called Let It Flow Together, too, that was on Says Money and Murder. And uh, no, I did mm-hmm. a soccer continue with him. We did about we did about four or five records ago. Yeah. Well, like, Dead and Murder was the last one. Yeah, him and uh, Psycho uh, was kind of sounding, was kind of sounding similar back in the day. Yeah, they had that you high pitched tone, pretty much. Yeah, I wouldn't couldn't, couldn't, couldn't tell yeah, that my was boy Cosmo and Psycho like back in the day too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I always like cats with that tone. I guess I guess listening to a uh, one eighty seven rap from uh, Bud Law, <laughs> that was one yeah, of my I'm favorite say, high, yep. high tone yep. rappers. So I guess I like rappers with a different tone, you know. Oh yeah, he never missed Blended a beat, better. man. The way he kicked that yeah, shit off, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. G-funk. yeah, yeah. 'Cause I, oh, I always yeah. wanted to get on tracks with people where we don't sound like you know they voice different from mine. Like I like being on mm-hmm. records where you don't have no problem with identifying who you're listening to. Who Pat? Yeah. That, now, now, why you saying that? You like like your old dude got a uh, a historical music background, and then uh, Big Hutch, he the same way. Like, yeah. you, ever, you ever thought about doing some uh, some music with Big Hutch? We need to put that shit in motion, Fred. Man, if I could get in touch with Big Hutch, man. We, <laughs> I'm trying to get you in happen. touch with him. Yeah, I'm trying to make that shit happen. Because yeah, both, both, both of y'all, both of y'all, because people don't even talk about your production skills. See, people don't know that. They know you as a rapper a lot of times, but they don't know. I done seen videos of you straight playing the bass. Like, mm-hmm. this, why this motherfucker ain't just... Uh, start a band. Yeah, you know, yeah. You ever thought about think, that? Just think, starting your own band. Yeah, yeah. I thought about it. I think, I think, uh, I never really like tried to push my production skills out there because I wasn't really. I was trying to be known as a rapper. Honestly, I grew mm-hmm. up playing instruments and stuff. But <laughs> another reason why I produced a lot of that stuff was I didn't have the money to pay nobody. You know what I'm saying? So right, I wasn't right. looking at it as. I'm doing all this myself. I was looking at it as, man, we're going to do whatever we take to get this project done. <laughs> right. And get it out there. So I didn't really speak too much about the instrumentation and stuff like that. But, yeah, that's, that's something I do every right. day regardless whether I'm in the game right. or not. I seen not. you I'm slapping that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I mess around with bitch. it, man, because Pop, Pop's <laughs> always left instruments around. So I had, a time, I had enough time to just pick them up and play with them. And as I got older, I started buying my own guitars and stuff. And it's just something I love to do. It's, it's, just, it's a passion, oh, yeah. you know. Definitely, definitely. We got a uh, shout-out to Marcel. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for calling in. We got... Uh, right, Lonely salute, Kim Marcel. Yeah, appreciate it, brother. I see somebody from Indianapolis, too. Hold the line, Indy. Here's Sin from France, man. What's up, Sin? Yeah, what's up, Scott? What's up, Mac J? What's up, Gangsta Pat? What's going yeah, on, um, Sin? What's going on, Sin? Yeah, it's cool. Um... Can you tell us about your album First Suspect, and especially the track uh, "As a Gangster"? You got a delivery special on, on this one, and uh, also about the track "Legion of Doom." Yeah, yeah. Wow, you went way back, man. That's that's the first. <laughs> that's the first stuff we jumped yeah, out there with. Uh, I about to say, Sin Encyclopedia. He gonna take you back. He gonna make you. He gonna make you work. Yeah, yeah. That's way <laughs> back. Yeah, uh, he told DJ Paul about a song. He, Paul didn't even remember he did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm the gangster man. That was a that was a song. We had a dance called the Gangster Walk at the time, and yeah, uh, still you know that was, they was yeah. They always do the Gangster Walk. They was doing it to Sir Mix a lot and a couple of other record DOC. So I figured, man, hey, it's a Memphis dance. We need a Memphis song. So I'm the gangster was kind of made to fit that dance. Yeah. And it gave people something to say while they was doing it then, because everybody felt like they was a gangster while they was doing it. So, hey, only gangsters. Right. Yeah, so yeah. that's where that record came Shouts from. Shouts out to SMK, it, too, with the Gangster Walk, man. That shit's still oh, a classic, man. too. Y'all exactly. made that shit, man. You hey, know what I'm saying? Well, since you brought SMK up, 
Look, SMK was the one that made all these Memphis artists get their bottom end right on their songs, man. He the one brought that bass, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. the first cat to introduce me to look, the I, I, Right, and I met all y'all around the same goddamn time. I met him in the Brookwood, too. The, I met, the yeah. first I ever met you was in the motherfucking Brookwood. Yeah. We were skipping yeah. school. We was going to Hillcrest then. You wasn't there, but we, we were still at that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Like, shit, yeah, you yeah. get a bag from the motherfucking pepper tree, and then we finna head over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could Walking the through day, the tunnel right behind there. the community center. You hear me? We walking yeah. through the motherfucking the, the sewer tunnels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the yeah. <laughs> hey, you going way back, cuz. <laughs> yeah, man. You had Don't to be there to know man. all that, brother. You had to be there. Yeah. Hell yeah. Behind so, all yeah, the PC building, smoking fat-ass blunts. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, but to go back to the Legion of Doom record too, uh, you know, we we <clears throat> at the time, you know, Posse doing Posse songs was real popular. I think NWA made that real popular. So Legion of Doom was our yeah. Posse song, you know, with uh, me and MC Rod. Who else we had on Legion of Doom? I think we had Psycho on there too. So yeah, it was just yeah. a Posse song. Just all the MCs that was in the house at the time jumped on the record. And Psycho was, yeah, a, was one of the first also producer of Memphis uh, with underrated uh, with Psycho Beats. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know what I'm saying? At that time, you almost had to have a posse song. I mean, if you were talking about Above the Law, they had one, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. DOC yeah. had one. The that grand was, finale on the DOC. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. still the two. That yeah. was the one. Yeah, that's uh, it. I think Above the Law was the last song or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, that was type of, yeah, that's what Lee's been doing well, man. Yeah. You know but yeah, you took away that number one suspect. That shit made oh. you start uh, reminiscing in your brain and shit, didn't it, Pat? You start, oh, man. You start remembering when you had the curl in your hair and all that yeah. shit. You said, man, I got the Hawaiian silky. Fuck yeah. away, Nouveau. I got the Hawaiian silky. <laughs> man, it was I remember days. them niggas, man. I remember them days, man. <laughs> I remember them days, man. I can't man. Think of you with the Ghetto Boys yeah. and, and uh, um, you know, different artists, you know what I'm saying, Ice Cube and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? What was it like yeah. for you at that age being around them guys? It was a, it was a dream come true. Like like my mother used to tell me, like, I had all the rappers out the Word Up magazines and stuff. I had them posted up on my wall, and I had drew a picture of myself, like, this is what my album cover going to look like. And I put it on the wall, and she was like, when she came in the scene, and she was like, you're going to end up dreaming yourself up on that wall. And that's exactly what yeah. I did. Because I was able to hang my yeah. own posters up, and, and you know, it'd be, noticed, it'd be noticed. But that was a dream, man. It's like, it, it was like unreal, because it's like, I told myself, man, I'm going to one day I'm gonna be kicking with all the top rappers in the game, I'm going to have my album out, and it just it just came. I guess the planets lined up, and it, my dream allowed me to live it, man. It's just, it was amazing, you know, to meet. Because at the time, you know, a person like Ice Cube, man, when I met him, he had just left N.W.A. And uh, well, not when I met him, when I started, you know, doing shows with him, he had just left N.W.A. Yeah. So the beef right. between them was still cooking, you know. So he was real hot then. I think he had no Vaseline out. It was that Ice Cube, but uh, yeah. man, you know, just to open up shows with him and Too Short and Snoop, and man, it was just, it was like a dream, man. You know, for somebody from Memphis, where well, we didn't really get the chance to really see rappers like that. Man, it was right. amazing, yeah. you know. Hell yeah, it was a life change. We got a, uh, <laughs> we got a, uh, we got a Indianapolis caller three one seven. You on the phone with Gangsta Fat? Chris What's up, Brown? Man? Fat no. What you saying? Big nose ass. Hey, what you saying? 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 Hey, what <laughs> man, I, man, I just had to let Pat know, man. He he's been a big, big influence on me musically, like over years. Even when I was just doing my shit, just as a hobby. Even when I was rapping in college, man, like Pat's wow. music has influenced me big. And it's right now right. It's to the point, man. When y'all was talking about the production, 
Like, yeah. them little videos you put on playing the guitar, man, that inspired me. Yeah, man. man. To win. That's that shit. That's I didn't wait to his real. He, I didn't wait to his page. I didn't wait to his credit, page. But he be, he be slapping that motherfucker up. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to well, I'm gonna go to someone here. I'm going to pull up the video. I'm going to be like, hey, I want to learn how to play like that. And, yeah. and, and that's, that's where it's going to begin. I don't know shit about the guitar, but I want to know how to play that shit. That's it, yeah. I appreciate it, brother. Just just get you one, man, and sleep with it. And just every chance yeah. you get, just work on technique, man, and take it one chord at a time, one note at a time. You can do it. Hey, you, know Chris, what I'm you, you ever chop a screw in your patch music? Oh, man. Um, I did a, when I was still doing the, as a hobby, I was DJ Captain Cool, and I did a daily <laughs> versus. <laughs> It's on uh it's on YouTube at a, I think probably about ten or eleven thousand plays. But uh Right. I, I tried I did a I did a mix, I did a Origins of Crunk mix. And uh I yeah. put Mr. Pat, all they wanna do is smoke your weed up on there. And I blended yeah. it. I tried to experiment <laughs> on some uh I tried to mix like that EDM shit, I tried to slow the EDM shit and mix it with Pat. It came out, it came out okay, but I still got to experiment with the style. Yeah, yeah keep, keep working on that shit. You got it. Because I already know, I already knew it was your fat nose ass anyway, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but Chris, for real, Chris, fuck with Gangsta Pat, for real. I, I know that for a fact. Like, you got fans out here like that. Like, Chris, fuck with your shit. And then on another thing, we, we, we were talking about it earlier, like, uh, you be going in on these motherfucking, uh, on, on these ratchet-ass bitches on, 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 on the book, <laughs> and these square-ass dudes, like you said. You, you might be able to prevent somebody from going through certain things, but but one thing I know is uh, you, 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 you really attack these motherfuckers that put these uh, hoes on the peps. Yeah. Pat be setting them straight. Yeah, because a lot, a, a lot of that in shit. Memphis come from females. A lot of cats in Memphis hate you over females, man. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You could be the hit hit they baby mama 20 years ago, man. They'll still hate you right now today, man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I address certain issues, man. And, you know, plus a lot of people out there ain't addressing issues like that. You know, people, yeah. you know, like Steve Harvey come out with a book talking about acting like a woman would think like a man. That's bullshit. You don't want no woman thinking like it's no man around bullshit. you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, come that's on, that bro, propaganda. Come on, these folks like that. <laughs> right. You know, but that's just yeah. something to keep the hype going, you know, until the until I get back to the music, man, because, you know, you can always talk about a good subject, and people going to chime in on it, and they're going to come yeah, in. You've always been a pimp nigga, too, though. When you, when you get back to the music, <laughs> man, if you need, any, if you need any, any dragged and chopped shit, man, just holler, and I got you. Hey, man, I appreciate it, bro. I need all the help I can get, man. I'm telling you, I've been out the loop so long, man. I need all hey, the give me the I word. Get. I got you. Uh, yeah, sure. uh, uh, the EP you dropped was in 2013. That was the last project you dropped, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It just, and, and honestly, I just didn't have the money to push that EP like I wanted to, you know. Yeah. So it really didn't get a proper chance to really blossom i just kind of just stuck it out there you know because when people be like when you coming out with something new you know you want to satisfy that but at right. the same time it ain't like it used to be we could go a year yeah, we could say, do you, an album you gotta, you know? hey pat you gotta give us something you can't keep teasing us just slapping the bass my nigga you gotta I know it, shit, man, we don't I give know a fuck. It. if it's one or two songs <laughs> motherfucker gonna get that shit man and we push them you, one bro. or two songs fuck it you know what i'm saying because that's all yeah. that's yeah. all the motherfucker want especially because, uh, like, what's important about what we do is a lot of these young cats don't know the music, right? So if I'm at yeah. work and I got these these 20-something-year-olds, these, uh, what they call them, millennials or whatever, if they like the yeah. music, man, I know it. I, I don't give a fuck if they say they don't. I see you motherfuckers yeah. bobbing your head. I see you trying to gangster walk and shit because you see me <laughs> doing the shit. You trying to make oh, it like yeah. you're making fun of me, but really you're doing it because it feels good to do this shit. It feels yeah. good to do certain shit with certain shit. So, but they, yeah, that's true. These, these kids and the new motherfuckers, they just, they want to learn even if they ain't telling us. So when we show yeah, them yeah. every now and then you bust a song out, I love when y'all bust songs out because I'll be like, I can't wait to uh, run. 
they they oh did you hear the new Migos? Did you hear the new Yachty? I say I got something for you. You hear this new Sibo? Did you hear this yeah. shit? Or did you hear this new MC8 and, uh, and Lady of Rage? Did you hear this shit? Yeah. They killing you, yeah. motherfuckers. But they ain't yeah. really killing you. We finna show you how to get on that same level. Yeah. The kids they want to learn. They just don't want us to tell it to them. They wanna they wanna think they found it on their own. So. I'll yeah, lead them yeah. to it. You know what I'm saying? So when you drop a little EP, it might not seem like nothing to you because you, you didn't get out of it what you wanted or what you know it could have did. But yeah. somebody got something out of that because I put that shit up against any of this shit. Yeah. They they can bring yeah. me the new oh, yeah. like I like Cardi <laughs> B, she got she she number one on the Billboard uh Billboard yeah. chart right now. Hot one hundred. Cardi yeah. B, okay, it's a rap song or whatever. And I ain't knocking yeah. her for whatever she do. But I go get an old Mia X track that's eating that shit alive. Yeah, yeah. Eating it on, on some yeah, rap shit. Of course. Yeah. But of course. you know it's yeah. Mia X and she didn't she didn't she didn't sell herself like Cardi B selling herself. So and I ain't yeah. knocking Cardi B. So don't call me no fucking hater. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I buy the shit that I want to buy. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, they love to call I us that I don't too. Mind being called a hater. I don't mind being called a hater. Yeah, they could. Yeah, they call us called hater. a hater. By somebody who doesn't even fucking know what hate, real hatred is, you know what I'm saying? They just yeah. quick yeah. to use that term, you know what I'm saying, as, as a fucking scapegoat because they know we're telling the truth. If I sit in this mumble yeah. rap sucks, and I got 300 other MCs that'll destroy <laughs> your favorite artist, oh, you're just a hater. No, man, I'm. Yeah. I, yeah. I like talent Cause, over bullshit, bars over bullshit. Right, because I, you know, right, exactly. I'm about to say because I have people ask me. Oh, y'all had Gangsta Pat on, but why y'all ain't had Black Youngs on? Black Youngs already got a platform, man. Yeah, this man. shit is for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, fucking Vlad or whoever the hell, the Breakfast Club, yeah, and, they got those and, platforms. And, 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 you know and, 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 and Vlad should be asking Pat for interviews and shit, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, damn. but if they don't, we're not going to wait on them. Like, we're not going to say, oh, Vlad ain't interviewing them, so let's go get them. No, we, we fuck with y'all because we fuck with the music, man. Especially if y'all still doing it. Especially yeah, yeah. if y'all still doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, a lot of our legends ain't here no more. Yeah, yeah we, we lost true. a lot of legends. That's true. So with the legends that's, that's here, y'all stories need to be heard. Somebody need to hear about how you was on before 8 Ball and them. You put them on. People yeah, don't know that. Yeah. Everybody know 8 Ball no, and MJG. They might not never say it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They might never be like, Oh, against the Pat, man, if it wasn't for him. But they know it, though. Like you said, yeah, the real yeah. know it. The, the real, oh, yeah. the people that it really matter to, they know your contribution to the game. And, uh, yeah. like, that's why I love to see Al Capone, what he's doing right now. Because uh, oh, yeah. Al Capone the same way. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and you, you could be right on the same type of thing if that's what you wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could be doing the same thing because you mean that much to Memphis, man. And I'm always, yeah, I'm sure. not only because uh, we went to Hillcrest, and we Vikings and shit, you know, and, yeah. and you done went up Reigns, and you done went up Mill Branch, and you done, you, you done went up uh, motherfucking Winchester, like, we, we went to Chisholm Trail, you done went to the Courtyard, all this other shit. We went to the Music Aquarium, rest in peace to Larry from the Music Aquarium, all that old shit. Hell yeah. You know, but yeah. you really, you really embodied Memphis, even when you left Memphis, and you were still, even in Atlanta, nobody in Atlanta said you was from Atlanta. They was like, all right, he a Memphis nigga. I guarantee oh, yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, we never. I we never. Like, like, I, never yeah. I didn't go to Atlanta to fit in and, and try to be like yeah. I'm from Atlanta. I went to Atlanta because the record company Itchy Bun, they was in Atlanta. Exactly. I like to be. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Little side, yep. stay on them, but everybody yeah, that's seen him, oh, that's my Memphis. Memphis. Yeah, that, that that's my Memphis nigga, man. Them niggas, that's some South Memphis niggas, man. They'll fuck you up, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, we right. took a lot of Memphis <laughs> stuff with us, man. That's how Atlanta people knew about Criminal Man, DJ Squeak, a lot of early three six mafia stuff. Cause we would take all Memphis stuff up there and pay and just give it away. Mm. All them little mixtapes, mm. cassettes, and stuff like that. I had I had cassette doubles in my living room. I was dubbing tapes, man, handing them out. All the Memphis mixes and stuff like that. A lot of people don't realize the reason Atlanta's so familiar with Memphis stuff because a lot of stuff we took up there back in the day. They had never heard that stuff right. before. Right, y'all was yeah, basically was like street teams out in that motherfucker. In yeah, yeah. We was pushing everybody's stuff. Criminal Mind, everybody. Gangster Black, whoever had a Memphis Nasty stuff. Nasty Nardo, whoever had some out popping. Time it right now. Yeah, we pushed it. We took it to Atlanta, man. Just gave it away. 
You know, so yeah. a lot of people don't even know that. But a lot of people, when I go today and they they see me, they a lot of folks that I knew from back then, they remember all that shit. I guarantee you, Little yeah. John heard that stuff. <laughs> you know, so oh, hell man, yeah. we, you, know, dudes, you know, I had a meeting at Lil So John was a young motherfucker to them. Yeah, I, was, I had a meeting had a what? with So So Death when Lil John was A and R over there. He, they had this dude called Black that they was trying to come out with. He wanted me to write for Black, but I'm like, shit, if I write for Black and then I end up popping, they gonna think, you know what I'm saying? I'm on Black Dick or something. Now nah, I gotta keep this for me, man. But right, you know. Yeah. I guess Jermaine figured what, you know, they already got black signed, and, you know, it's already a situation. So, you know, they was like, we'll get back with you another time. Then and then next thing I knew, Lil John was rapping, you know what I'm saying? So he even, right. like, I had my song Shake Something in Atlanta. <clears throat> when he came out with his album, he was talking to me about possibly buying the record Shake Something from me at the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I ain't going to sell it. And see, people, and people don't even know that. You know what I'm saying? Don't they don't clue. even know that. Yeah. yeah I almost they sold it in Lil Jon, man. But, uh, because, you know, Jazzy Faith yeah. did a lot of his early production, which is another Memphis producer. Yeah. So all that yeah. stuff he did, Who You With, Jazzy Faith did a lot of that, man. So you that you never was fucking right with, uh, uh, Tony Draper and them when, when, uh, when Ballin was down there? You weren't fucking with, you weren't fucking with Swab at all? I, or? I never met Tony Draper. I just, I just never mm. met him. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but I I think he did uh, as far as getting balling them out there and, and promoting him, he did an excellent job, man. I wish I could have, wish I could have been on yeah, that Tila team. went you know down there with them boys too and shit. Yeah, I remember yeah, all Yeah, I never met him. I wouldn't have put Houston on the front of my album cover though. That I wouldn't. No. Have <laughs> I would have kept it middle yeah. because that confused a lot of people. A lot of people thought balling them from Houston. I, I did. But, uh, I thought they were from, uh, from yeah, Houston. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying at first. Yeah, you know, a lot of people yeah, thought Tila was from uh, Houston too. They, yeah, them Black Haven boys, man. Yeah, because oh, South Memphis, was the Memphis, shit. A lot of Memphis rappers, you rarely, you rarely hear Tila's name in that Memphis bunch, but when they talk about Houston, his name will come up, you know, here and there. But right, I would, I couldn't abandon the identity of my city, man. I always rep to him, no matter what. Uh, we got we got another uh, okay. we got another one on the line for you, uh, Pat. This one's out of out of Memphis, man. Nine oh one. What's All up, nine oh one? What up, man? This Memphis Ma, fool. Memphis Ma. Memphis what Mark. up, boy? Yeah, another yeah, fat nose ass nigga. <laughs> 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 oh man, Dre, my polo looking ass nigga. What's up with y'all? Hey, them brothers be going in on each other on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta get him. That's my that's my nigga though, man. What's up, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> man, Black Haven's going in the house, man. We got two Black Haven, well, three Black Haven motherfuckers in the house right now. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you got the legend in here, man. The first nigga ever from Memphis in this bitch. What's happening? Yes, sir, man. You the man, Mark. You already know what it is. Man, I'm just trying to get like life, you, baby. man. I'm just trying to set an example. I'm just trying to get like you. Trying to set an example, man. Yeah, man. I so appreciate you calling in, bro. For sure, that's love, man. You know we be chopping it up anyway, man. I know, man. You fam, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? I got to listen in, man. You know, man, Jay fam, man. You know, like, the whole, you know, UG Magazine. Hey, it's number love, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got to show support. Right yeah. on, man. That's love, Mark. I appreciate that, man. That means a lot coming from you, bro. So you're a man of your word, man. I appreciate all the love and support, bro. Uh, yeah, so I right, man. Turn. Y'all a question, man. Go ahead. I just got a quick Go question. Ahead. I just got a quick question, y'all. What do y'all think about this whole bullshit with this Dolph and your Gotti thing, man? Uh, my right. my first initial thought when I heard it, man, it was, I was kind of sad about it. You know, I was very kind of disturbed by it because, you know, that could have been that could have been any two Memphis rappers, man. You know what I'm saying? There'd right. be a lot of beef going down through Memphis. That could have been any two Memphis rappers. And when in time you shoot somebody, I don't care where you shoot them at, man, it's, it's never a good thing. And then people ain't thinking what may come behind it. You That's never what know. I was about to say. Exactly. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like that could lead to more bullshit, shit. man. So... 
It's just unfortunate. It's not a part of rap. It's not what hip hop is based on. You know, that be when you drain the wrong people into the shit, and they they ain't got nothing to lose. That was a that was a nothing to lose nigga move. Whoever did that, probably didn't have shit to lose. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm sure. My in, like my my input on this thing. Only thing I gotta say is like you know like. It should have been like how y'all used to do it back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Y'all had a problem with each other and stuff like that, man. Box it out, man. That fight, that shooting shit, man. Like, that's some pussy shit, man. Like, just box it out, nigga. Yeah. I'm with that, I'm with that. It's, 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 I, more, I it's, more, it's, it's more other motherfuckers trying to attack us than us attacking each other. For real, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's my thing. Like, you already got to fight other obstacles. Why I got to fight with a motherfucker that's trying to get the same thing that I'm getting? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, we both in the same boat, for real. Yeah. But see, people can't see it like boat, that, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, but some people going to push your ass like off that. that motherfucking boat. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they like, want you it all, nigga. Yeah. And they want it all. They want it all. They want all the money, all the women, all the cars. And if anybody trying to compete with them, some niggas go as far as having something done to you, man. They, it, It's just... It ain't the first time it done happened. I think it's the first time. But now it ain't the first time it happened because it, just a year or two ago, it was another shoe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So right. it's becoming a it's becoming a, a, a pattern. I mean, look at look at what they did to Lorenzo Wright in Memphis, Tennessee. Who ever thought that would happen to him? That was Sam. That, that's right, Sam. exactly. That's yep. my You know what I'm saying? But who ever thought, as kind and given as that brother was, who ever thought he would get gunned down in the city he did so much for, man, and represented? Right. You know, you know so right. it ain't a game. You know, we got that dog. We got that dog eat dog mentality in Memphis. That's the fucking problem. We got that dog eat dog yeah. mentality. You know, it's that yeah. crab in the bucket thing. You know what I'm saying? Somebody trying yeah. to go up, motherfucker, a lash on your head trying to pull you down, man. It's stupid. Yeah. It is, man. It's sad too. And then man. we got and niggas I... stealing our shit. We letting niggas come in there and steal our shit while we sitting there yeah. beefing with each other, right? We got other motherfuckers coming to infiltrate and stealing our shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's easy to steal from niggas who ain't got no unity, man. If you if, yeah. you, if you see the if you see the niggas culture, all selling dope, selling dope in the house together and they all arguing into it, how easy would it be to manipulate one of them niggas to turn on the neighbor? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, yeah. So it's, we easy to infiltrate he, because he of it. Is he in critical condition or is he... Uh, is he getting better? What's they say he was stable. He's good. He's good. Oh, I heard he was in stable condition, man. And I, I met Dolph before. Dolph, Dolph a good-hearted dude, man. He, you know, he's a good-hearted brother, man. He just, he young, he having fun. He got some success going on. And he should be able to enjoy that without his life being threatened, man. You know. Yeah, right. That's sad. Oh, I hope, I hope. Too man just got shot. Yeah, I about to say Kick the Sneak got shot too. Yeah, oh, he's a veteran in the game. Uh, what yep. city he at? Uh, he's, uh, 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 he's uh, from uh, Oakland. He's from Oakland. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Ghost, uh, Ghost Ride, Ride Ghost Ride the Whip. Three crazy. Yeah, Mac Dre and all that. Ghost Ride the Whip. Three crazy. Yeah, three times crazy. Mark, yep. Yep, Kick the Sneak man. That's that West Coast shit though. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's but, you know what I'm saying? Like, we we got to do better in Memphis. You know what I'm saying? We got we got to do better. So like, we got so much potential. We innovated a lot of shit that motherfuckers are doing now. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. why the fuck we sitting here like beefing on shit and we all in for the same common fucking go? Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's too because we let the wrong people. We we get behind the wrong people without really checking to see what kind of person they really are, their character, or nothing like that. We just influenced by, mm. influenced by the music, <clears throat> and when they got something bumping, we just automatically get behind them. But I think if fans would start looking at the person a little bit more deeper, you could avoid supporting the right. fuck nigga, supporting the wrong counter motherfucker, helping them come up. Right. And then they, they get on top, and now they want to fuck everybody, don't want to help nobody, you know, and try to block other motherfuckers from getting on. I've seen that shit happen, too, so, you know. And, I, Pat, I, I you kept went through some shit, too. You went through oh, yeah. some shit, you know what I'm saying, coming through the game, too. You know what I'm saying? This ain't new. You know what I'm saying? He's the first oh, yeah. guy out of Memphis, you know what I'm saying? And he done went through some shit. 
Man, you yeah, see, I was I was the first motherfucker they had to hate. See, they got multiple choice now. Oh, I can hate on God. Yeah. I can hate on dog. I can hate on money bag, yo. I can hate on. I can go hate on the OG. I can hate on ball. Back when I came yeah. out, I was the only one really popping. So shit, I had to take on all that shit. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they they didn't have multiple choice back then. It was just mad. I mean, this shit is crazy. I mean, that's just yeah, crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, you got mistaken for another rapper because, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, DJ Quick and fucking uh, MCA was into it back in the day, and they mistaken you for that nigga. Yeah, the Jack the Rapper convention, <laughs> man. Hell, yeah, yeah, they, they thought you were DJ Quick. Surrounded me, dog. Yeah, they thought I was <laughs> DJ Quick, man. I told one yeah, thing, I know Quick, I'm Jack. Yeah, a, lot, a bunch of Crips. You know, at, oh, back shit. in that time, Crip, uh, DJ Quick was known as a blood. So I'm yeah. at the Jack the Rapper convention in Atlanta. They thought I was DJ Quick, man. They was about to get in my shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, you probably like, nigga, it's G enough. Fuck out of here, man. Yeah, we we in this I motherfucker. Know, nigga, I'm gangster Pat. I ain't no DJ Quick, nigga. The nigga, the nigga looked at me yeah. up and down and told his partner, yeah, that's that DJ Quick, nigga, man. I'm like, oh, shit. It's about to be a problem. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Listen to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. Nah. We still got a lot of talent in the mix, you know what I'm saying? Bottom line, we got so much talent, you know what I'm saying? We got Seed the Sick, you know, we got Money Bay Yo, we got uh, Yo Yo Money still a force to be reckoned with, you feel me? Yeah, I'm about to say Yo Millionaire. It's a gang of motherfuckers in the M, yo man, doing their thing, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just wish they'll, you know, come back and cut some shit with the OGs, man, you know, shit. Yeah. That'll be yeah, good to well. yeah, I'm down with that. That's, That's all I, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Man. I'm down At least with one that. record, you know what I'm saying? Shit. Yeah. That way <clears throat> we can expose them to our OG fans and they can expose us to their new age fans, man. That's how it's supposed to be. Exactly. Though. And exactly. that's how exactly. I try to do it. Bridging that, that gap. That. I like that record you did with Skinny, man. You, Skinny, and Zert. I love that record, dude. I love that motherfucker, Yeah, man. yeah. Man, I done done about three, four records with Skinny Zerk. I hope they use one. Is it on his album or you just heard it floating around? I heard one of them. I heard one of them, man. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Right, I, I, I was just about to ask you, you got some music coming out for Zerk or something. Yeah, we got, <laughs> man, Zerk we don't got get, He don't get his pro, He don't get his credit either. Nah, Zerk. He don't get Zerk his credit either. Zerk is the innovator of sound. Him and Squeaky is, man. Yeah, yeah, they definitely, they took that, man, I'm going to tell you something, the tempo was a little, you know what I'm saying, it was around, I guess, about maybe 85 or some 86, somewhere, but then they took it, and they slowed that shit down to the 60s, <laughs> that, that was, that's Zerk and Squeak, when you hear that slow Memphis shit, that's them, they come with that, man, they slowed that boom mm-hmm. down and caved that motherfucker, man, I'm telling you. What, what about you, though, Pat, hey, you, got, uh, okay? you got a project hey, Pat, coming is it okay up? okay if I tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got uh, I, I'm always working on music. I just, you know, I just get tired of putting music out there, and I don't have the resources to get it where it need to be, man. That that be my discouragement. But I got a zillion songs, man. I, I guess I'm gonna throw something out. I want to do like a Halloween project too. I, but I say that every year though. You know what I'm saying? I got several songs I could drop, but you know, I just don't do it, man. I, I guess because my, I, I feel like it. Okay, I'm gonna put it out. It's gonna linger for a minute. I ain't got the money to propel it where it need to be, and then it's on to the next project. So you know that that be that be discouraging sometimes, but I swear a lot of people been asking me about it, man. I promise you, I'm gonna give y'all something, bro. It's well, gonna we, be something we, coming, we, we and hopefully brother, by the end of October. We, we got you back Halloween. over here, and we're gonna put you in and and uh, you know we definitely we, we definitely want the people to hear it, man. And and um, I salute you for for still doing what you're doing. And uh, thank you, man, for coming back on the show, man. It's a huge honor to have you back on, man. Um, what hey, about man, before I, you go, I, though? I want to make sure I want to give you the floor, man. What if what if a uh, uh, cat's uh, on beat? Are you, are you doing production for other cats or anything like that? Or? You know, my problem with production is I do some tracks and then I want to sell them and then I decide, nah, I'm gonna keep these. <laughs> I better put these <laughs> in the cat. It's, 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 when you when you got the mind of an artist. I never had the mind of a producer. Like I said, I just did beats because I, I couldn't pay nobody, you know. So yeah. I don't really see myself as a producer. 
I tried to sell beats at once upon a time, but you know, man, motherfuckers don't even want to give you fifteen, twenty dollars for no track, man, because they can go online and loop something and rap over that shit, or they can take the hottest beat that's out, do a mixtape and rap over that shit. So it just ain't really yeah. never been profitable to me to sell tracks. I could do better with a track if I rap over my damn self, you know. But uh, yeah. that's true. That's true. You know. You know what I'm saying. That's true. But, and uh, it's time consuming. Man, Making man. tracks time consuming. Because they'll send you that shit back, like, do, redo this part, redo that, you know. That's time consuming, man. Add this <laughs> you know, took up a whole day. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. But uh, well, okay, I got what, something. Man, I'm going to drop something, man. Uh, so, uh, I, but I, me I and my father, we work. Your father, you, you, you doing work with him, too? Yeah, me and my father, we working on a project called it's, it's gonna be the son of Shaft, man. <clears throat> like you wow. know, they I, I got the sticks that he actually played Shaft with. I ain't even broke them out yet. You know what I'm saying? They got so much sentimental value that I don't even want to sell them. I don't even want to put them on eBay and auction them off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I keep them. They got real sentimental value to me. I probably pass away with them, man. But. He gave me them sticks. So we're going to do this Son of Shad project. I'm going I'm to get him and a couple of more musicians that used to play with Isaac Hayes' band and, you know, do something with a live feel. But it's going to be gangster, though. It's going to remind you of that old Isaac Hayes gangster shit. But we're going to yeah. put some, some nice lyrics over it, man, and, you know, keep that sound going, man. Because, I mean, you got to look at how many people sample Isaac Hayes. You know, some of the hottest rap records in the game contain the Isaac yeah. Hayes sample. Like mine playing tricks on me, ghetto boys. You know, Pop still get a little check off that, man. a little publishing off that, man. That was the Isaac Hayes uh, sample. Yeah, it's a lot of hit records, yeah. though, man. So. And, and your dad, you know what I'm saying, he was in the Blues Brothers. He was, you know, he did a lot of a, a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying. Was he able to to give you a lot of insight as a young, as a young guy growing up? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, as far as, because, far as, uh, you know, I started out as a drummer. I used to play drums in church. Drums was my thing. You know, I wanted to be just like him. <clears throat> but <clears throat> when rap came along, you know, new edition and stuff like that, you know, I fell in love with all that stuff. So I kind of leaned away from drums and started looking more into the guitars and, the, you know, the keyboards and all that shit. So, but, yeah, as far as music, yeah. period, that's that's my main. That's the reason I do this shit, I, it wasn't to be famous and to be known. It was to prove to him, you know what I'm saying, that I could take my music and do and make some success with it too, you know. So yeah. uh, as we was growing up, you know, he was he was the head musician in the family. <laughs> so I wanted to make some noise too, you know what I'm saying. That was my motivation. Well, so I never wanted to be a star. I just wanted to play music. 2017. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, definitely, man, definitely. Well, I'll tell you what, Pat, thanks again for uh, coming back on the show, man, and uh, you know, we hope to have you on again, man, uh, in the future as always, brother. Man. Uh, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Hey, man, I just want to say thank y'all. Thank the, thank the show, man, for having me back. Thank for all the support, everybody that called in. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate all that love, man. If it weren't for y'all, there wouldn't be no me. You know what I'm saying? So just know I'm appreciative of that, man. And I hope everybody have a good night and a good rest of the year, man. Most definitely, most definitely, man. I'll definitely stay in touch with you, man. Take care of yourself, brother. Appreciate yep. it.